Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be sharing with you three of our favorite holiday appetizers. Before we carry on with this video, we wanted to chat with you about our sponsor today, which is Allform. If you follow us on Instagram, you already heard about our new sectional, but today we're going to share about it and share some more details. If you're not familiar with Allform, they sell modular furniture, so they have couches, sectionals, chairs, you name it, and you can create over 500 unique combinations with the furniture. It's actually the sister company to Helix. You heard us talk about Helix before. They make mattresses, and we already trusted the company. We knew we wanted to get a new sectional. So when we heard about all four and we thought it was the perfect fit. This sectional is super comfy. It was really easy to put together and it's no tools required. They deliver straight to your door for free and you have over 100 days to figure out if you like it or not. I was really nervous when it came because it was nine humongous boxes that just showed up on our porch. But yeah, it was a really simple process to put it together. It was a fun process and I'm really happy with the results. I love it. Like Chris said though, if you are going to get an all form couch or sectional or chair, you have 100 days to try it. If you don't like it, you can send it back, but I promise you, you're gonna love it. What we love most about our all form sectional is how beautifully it fits into our space. We had, an old couch and love seat before and it just it was too small for us. We like to lay out and it's just also yeah we could not didn't work on it. We both tried to like lay together on it and we were always like watching TV really uncomfortably. And the love seat was too small. So we knew that we wanted a sectional. We just didn't find the perfect one and we finally did. And I wanted to mention if you have pets like us or if you have kids or if you're just messy, it is a stain resistant, really high quality, very durable fabric, which I love. That's what we needed. We also made sure to get a darker color as well because we didn't want to risk it with the dogs, but I love it. We have a pop of color in our living room. We needed that color. We even got a new rug and I'm just, I'm just obsessed. Yeah, with our living room is now super cozy and we really love it. And all form furniture is sustainably made in the US so you can feel confident and comfortable with your purchase. You can order it easily online and we also have a 20% off discount code if you're interested. I also did want to mention the shipping time of furniture sometimes takes like two to three months and this actually, it's a a lot faster and if you're looking for a new couch or sectional or chair for your space and you want it as soon as possible this is a great company to purchase from yep so all the information for all's form will be linked down below and let's get back into the video First up for our appetizers, we're making some garlic and herb dinner rolls. So to start, I'm prepping my yeast. I have some warm almond milk here. I'm gonna add some sugar, mix that through, and then add some yeast and allow this to activate. Next up to a large bowl, I'm going to add in some all-purpose flour, sugar, some fresh herbs. You can really use any herbs of your choice. We have rosemary, thyme, and sage today. Some garlic powder, baking powder, and salt. I'm gonna mix that together until everything is nice and uniform. Then I'm adding in my activated yeast and some melted vegan butter. Next, I'm just gonna mix that together until it is nice and uniform. I'm gonna start going in with my hands too, just to get it fully incorporated. Then I'm just going to knead it until it is nice and smooth. Kneading dough is very therapeutic. I love doing it and I don't know, it's just so satisfying to see the dough go from this rough texture to a really nice smooth ball. All right, we're just going to pop this into a grease bowl and cover it with a wet towel and allow it to rise for about an hour. So the dough has risen and I'm going to divide it now into 15 pieces. You can do this just by estimating. I'm actually gonna be using a kitchen scale here just for accuracy. Once I roll the dough into balls, I'm gonna transfer it to my cast iron skillet and evenly arrange that as best as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm gonna cover that with a wet towel and allow it to rise for another hour. The rolls have risen. They look absolutely gorgeous. And now I'm just gonna pop them into the oven and bake it until they are nice and golden. So while our rolls bake, we're going to prep a vegan garlic and herb butter. This is super easy and highly recommended. It brings the recipe over the top and it's just so good. So in my pan, I'm adding some vegan butter. I'm gonna allow that to melt. Then I have some fresh garlic. I'm just going to saute that until it becomes nice and fragrant. Then throw in some herbs and cook that for about a minute and then remove that from heat. These rolls look amazing. They are perfect. This is actually the most perfect batch we have made so far. Perfect timing because it's for the YouTube video. Oh my gosh. 
And the best part, we're gonna brush it with our garlic herb butter. This makes them shiny, it just brings out the golden color and it just makes them look more appetizing and also, I guess, taste more, taste more appetizing? Is that even correct to say? They just taste better. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna brush them. I said this earlier, but I'm gonna say it again. These turned out so perfect. Oh my god. You know what we should dip these in? Marinara Mana. sauce. They're so fluffy, and they're packed with flavor. You don't need to put additional, I mean, you could put additional butter inside, but you, don't, you really don't need to. This will also go well with the dip we're gonna make next, so. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't even know what to say. I know, I have no words. Bread is the best. Bread is pretty much life, besides rice. Rice, bread, everything nice. Chris had the idea after we actually started making this, we should have made this into a Christmas tree. You could totally do that if you don't bake it in the cast iron skillet. You might need something bigger or you might need to make them smaller. I don't really know. I you haven't done do that before. do it on like a sheet pan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that would be really good. If you do do that, let us know. Send us a photo. That would do be awesome. <laughs> um, but we thought of it a little too late. But this isn't just for Christmas, just for the holidays. You can make this whenever you'd like. I don't know. We're going to keep eating it, but... Oh, let's get on to the next recipe. The next recipe we're making today is a creamy spinach and artichoke dip. To start, we're gonna add some oil to a pan and then saute some onions and garlic until the garlic is fragrant and the onions are translucent. Next to a blender, we're gonna add in our sauteed onions and garlic along with some dairy-free cream cheese, some silken tofu, lemon juice, nutritional yeast, almond milk, and some salt and pepper. We'll blend that up until smooth. After that to our blender, we're gonna add in our spinach, artichokes, dairy-free Parmesan and some chives, and then we'll just pulse that in. We don't want it to be super smooth, so just a few pulses should be fine. Next, we're gonna transfer our mixture into a grease baking dish and spread it out evenly. Then we'll just pop it in the oven to bake. We got our dip here, so I have some carrots. I toasted up some bread with a rosemary and olive oil we have, and then I topped it with some dry parsley. And then I just broiled it until it was nice and golden. Celery, and then Chris got these crackers. I don't know what exactly, whole grain crackers? Whole grain, Milton's. Milton crackers. So we're gonna dig in, not gonna lie, we were already digging in behind the scenes because you can't That's not good. eat this. And also we did that dip shot you saw with the cracker. Mm -hmm. So we had to eat the cracker. Mm. It's so good. Perfect dip. Oh my god. If you have a party or a family gathering or anything this holiday season. If you just want to make good food, make this. Just make this. You can also serve this in a bread bowl, which would be really nice. Or like a sourdough loaf. Not a sourdough. Oh, like a, a rye loaf. Is that the, the darker bread? The rye bread? Oh, I thought you meant like the really like Italian nice. bread, like the long one. You could do that, that too. That would be fun. So, have fun yeah, with it. Yeah, have fun with it. That was a lot of talking. Basically, you need to make this as soon as possible. The last and final recipe we're making in today's video are these shepherd's pie twice-baked potatoes. They are a great recipe to serve for the holidays because I feel like they're very unique looking and they're really fun to make. So first, we're taking some rusted potatoes and we washed them, scrubbed them, get all that dirt off. We're gonna take a fork and we're gonna prick our potatoes. And you don't need to prick it too many times, but I don't know, four or five times. We're gonna oil our potatoes and just rub all that oil in. I like to do it with my hands, it's a lot easier. You can do it with a pastry brush, but I feel like it's a little counterproductive. Lastly, I'm just popping the potatoes onto a baking sheet. I'm gonna bake these in the oven until they are soft to well, not soft to touch, I was gonna say soft to squeeze. I don't think that's uh, proper. But basically you want them to be soft when you squeeze them, so it will vary depending on the size of the potatoes. Typically they take between 30 minutes to an hour. These will probably take around 30 to 40 minutes. We're babysitting our friend's dog and she is here. Oh, I was gonna film her. She's making her way out. Andy, come here. Say hi to the video. Hi. <laughs> Anytime we're in the kitchen, she's like, ooh, what do you have? Next up, we're prepping the filling, and for the filling, we're making it a lentil and mushroom base. That will be our vegan meat in this. It is very meaty, it has great texture, and it has great flavor. You can really use whatever filling you'd like, but if you need a filling suggestion, this is the one you should make. I have an oiled pan here. I'm gonna add in some onions, garlic, and celery. And we're just gonna cook that until they're nice and soft and fragrant. Next up, we're adding some lentils, some mushrooms, and some fresh herbs. We have parsley, rosemary, and thyme here. 
We're adding in tomato paste, some Worcestershire sauce, and some salt and pepper. Mix that through and then sprinkle the whole mixture over with some flour. Then we're going to mix that together and allow the flour to cook off for about a minute. Lastly, we have a frozen veggie mix here along with some vegetable broth and we're going to mix that through and allow it to cook for a few minutes. You still want it to retain its moisture, but you don't want it to be drippy. Our potatoes are cooked. We ended up cooking a little extra just to have in house. And next, we're going to trim our potatoes or is that, is that the right word? Trim? Sli slice? Slice. Chop. Chop. We're gonna cut our potatoes. Cut potatoes. <laughs> I'm gonna take a sharp knife, be very careful, and you're just going to cut the top off of it. I don't think it's like really in the middle, it's more so like the top third of it, but honestly, if you do it in the middle, it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna take my knife and cut the top off, be very careful, and you should be left with this top piece and then this little potato boat. And we're gonna keep these because we're gonna be making our topping with this. So I'm gonna continue doing that, just slicing the top off of all our potatoes. With the potato tops, we're just going to peel the skin off and then add them to a bowl. I don't suggest keeping the skins in it because we're going to be transferring this to a piping bag to pipe it over the twice baked potatoes. And if the potatoes aren't super smooth, it's hard for it to go through the star tip and it's just a whole thing. So I would suggest just removing the skin. So next we're gonna scoop out our potatoes and you can do this using a small spoon, but we suggest using a teaspoon. I feel like this works perfectly. It is a great size and it creates like a really nice tunnel in there. So you're gonna scrape it out, but you wanna make sure you preserve the edges of it. So I would say maybe like a quarter of an inch around the edges. That way the potato still maintains its structure and it can hold the filling. And then anything that you scoop out, we're gonna set it aside in the bowl that had the tops in it and we're gonna turn that into mashed potatoes. To make super fine mashed potatoes, we're gonna be using a ricer. If you don't have one, you can just use a fork or a potato masher to get your potatoes as finely mashed <laughs> as possible. But a ricer definitely helps do this the most efficiently. So we're just gonna add a little bit at a time into our ricer and then just press it into this bowl here. To my riced potatoes, I'm gonna add some vegan butter and vegan cream cheese. Everything's gonna be vegan, just. We don't gotta say it. We don't gotta time. say it. <laughs> we're just reasonable vegan. <laughs> and then we're gonna add some garlic powder and some plant-based milk. We're using almond milk, but you can use any plant-based milk of your choice as long as it's unsweetened. And lastly, we're gonna add some salt and pepper. And we'll just mix that all up until everything is nice and creamy. I'm getting ready to transfer my potatoes into a piping bag and to make that a little bit easier we're just going to be using a tall glass or jar and we'll just wrap the bag around that and then we're just going to scoop our potatoes into the bag. Next up we're going to fill our potatoes, super easy, just take your filling, stuff it in. The one thing I want to note here is make sure you really pack it into the potato. You want to get as much filling in there as possible. These potatoes or the skins itself are unseasoned. So you wanna make sure you get as much flavor in there with the filling and you'll get more flavor with the topping as well. Next up, we're going to pipe our potatoes onto our potatoes. And I wanted to mention if you don't have a piping bag, you can also just scoop your mashed potatoes onto this and kind of shape it around as best you can and it'll still taste delicious and they'll still look delicious. So we're going to just pipe it. Um, what would this be, Chris? What would this like zigzag motion? Start it. Well, no, I mean like the movement, would be like a zigzag? Yeah. Zigzag. Side to side. Side to side, let's do it. Look how beautiful that looks. It's like frosting, but savory and it's potatoes. It's the best thing ever. All right, we're just gonna pop these into the oven for about 10 minutes and then set it to broil and broil them until they are nice and golden. That's delicious. It's so warm. Gravy with this would be awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So good. I just love potatoes. Potatoes are the best. If you didn't have time, wanted to speed it up, you could skip the second baking process and then just pipe the potatoes on top and broil it. It won't have that nice like crust on top, but it'll still be really delicious. Mm. Really good. Also, we have a regular shepherd's pie recipe on our blog if you Which is want this. That. It's literally this in a... In a casserole dish. Yeah. That's like an entree. <laughs> this is an appetizer. 
I guess. You can eat this as an entree. We have eaten this as an entree. When, we were, true. when we were testing it the other day, we had so much of it. So we, just, we were eating it for dinner. We had the potatoes and then we had extra mashed potatoes and filling on the side. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so that is all for our appetizers today. We really hope that you enjoy these recipes. All of the recipes will be linked down below as always. And let us know your favorite recipe of today and what you'll be making for the holidays. We have a ton more appetizers on our blog. We weren't able to film all of them today, but we will link a, I was going to say playlist, <laughs> a blog post down below that rounds up a bunch of holiday recipes that you can check out. It not only has appetizers, but it also has entrees and desserts if you are looking for those too. Next week, we also have a dessert video coming out, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be a good one. We're going to be sharing three of our favorite desserts that are perfect for the holidays or just perfect for whenever you want to make them. If you're new here and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell notification. We post videos every week, and we'd love to have you here more often. Yeah, stay tuned for more recipe videos, more vlogs, and all that good stuff. We hope you have a great holiday if this is the last video of the year you see from us, and we will see you soon. Peace. Bye.